Sultan Rajiat ud Din Wa ud Din, popularly known as Razia Sultana, was a ruler of the Delhi Sultanate in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. She was the first female Muslim ruler of the subcontinent, and the only female Muslim ruler of Delhi. A daughter of Mamluk Sultan Shamsuddin il Tutmish, Razia administered Delhi during 1231-1232 when her father was busy in the Gwalior campaign. According to a possibly apocryphal legend, impressed by her performance during this period, Iltutmish nominated Razia as his heir apparent after returning to Delhi. Iltutmish was succeeded by Razia's half-brother Runuddin Firoz Shah, whose mother Shah Turkan planned to execute her. During a rebellion against Runuddin, Razia instigated the general public against Shah Turkan, and ascended the throne after Runuddin was deposed in 1236. Razia's ascension was challenged by a section of nobles, some of whom ultimately joined her, while the others were defeated. The Turkic nobles who supported her expected her to be a figurehead, but she increasingly asserted her power. This, combined with her appointments of non-Turkic officers to important posts, led to their resentment against her. She was deposed by a group of nobles in April 1240, after having ruled for less than four years. She married one of the rebels, Ikshiruddin Altunya, and attempted to regain the throne but was defeated by her half-brother and successor Moizdin Baram in October that year, and was killed shortly after. Razia's name is also transliterated as Radia or Regia. The term Sultana, used by some modern writers, is a misnomer as it means the king's wife rather than female ruler. Razia's own coins call her Sultan Jalalat al Dunia Wal Din or as al Sultan al Muazam Raziat al Din bint al Sultan. The Sanskrit language inscriptions of the Sultanate call her Jalal Adina, while near contemporary historian Manaj calls her Sultan Raziat al Dunia Wal Din bint al Sultan. Razia was born to the Delhi Sultan Shamsuddin Iltutmish, a Turkic slave of his predecessor Kutub al Dinaybek. Razia's mother, Turkan Katun, was a daughter of Kutub al Dinaybek and the chief wife of Iltutmish. Razia was the eldest daughter of Iltutmish, and probably his firstborn child. Iltutmish had groomed his eldest son Nasiruddin Mahmud to be his successor, but this son died unexpectedly in 1229. According to historian Manaj I. Siraj, Iltutmish believed his other sons were absorbed in pleasurable activities, and would be incapable of managing the state affairs after his death. While leaving for his Gwalior campaign in 1231, Iltutmish left his daughter Razia as in charge of Delhi's administration. Razia performed her duties so well that after returning to Delhi, Iltutmish decided to name her as his successor. Iltutmish ordered his officer Mushrif I Mamlakat Tajwal Mulk Mahmud Debir to prepare a decree naming Razia as the heir apparent. When his nobles questioned this decision on the basis that he had surviving sons, Iltutmish replied that Razia was more capable than his sons. However, after Iltutmish's death, the nobles appointed his son Runuddin Firuz as the new king. It is suggested that during his last years, Iltutmish had agreed to appoint a son as his successor. This is suggested by the fact that after becoming seriously ill, he had recalled Runuddin from Lahore to Delhi. Another possibility is that the legend of Iltutmish nominating Razia as his successor is a false story circulated by Razia's supporters after her ascension. Manaj is the only near-contemporary source that narrates this legend, and he did not witness the events or the alleged decree himself, he was in Gwalior at the time, and did not return to Delhi until 1238. Runuddin was not an able ruler, and left the control of administration to his mother Shah Turkan. The duo's blinding and execution of Iltutmish's popular son Kutbuddin, combined with Shah Turkan's high-handedness, led to rebellions by several nobles, and even the wazir Nizamul Mulk Junaidi joined the rebels. This situation became worse, when the Turkic origin slave officers close to Runuddin planned killings of the Sultanate's Tazak officers. This led to the murders of several important Tazak officers, including Junaidi's son Ziyul Mulk and Tajul Mulk Mahmud, who had drawn up the decree declaring Razia as the heir apparent. While Runuddin marched towards Kurum to fight the rebels, Shah Turkan planned to execute Razia in Delhi. At a congregational prayer, Razia instigated the general public against Shah Turkan. A mob then attacked the royal palace and detained Shah Turkan. Several nobles and the army pledged allegiance to Razia, and placed her on the throne, making her the first female Muslim ruler in South Asia. Runuddin marched back to Delhi, but Razia sent a force to arrest him he was imprisoned and probably executed on November 19, 1236, having ruled for less than seven months. Razia's ascension to the throne of Delhi was unique not only because she was a woman, but also because the support from the general public was the driving force behind her appointment. According to the 14th-century text Futua Salatin, 
she had asked the people to depose her if she failed to meet their expectations. From the very beginning of her reign, Razia faced stiff opposition from nobles of Turkic origin. She had ascended the throne with support of the general public of Delhi rather than that of the powerful Turkic origin provincial governors. Razia attempted to offset the power of the Turkic nobility by creating a class of non-Turkic nobles, which led to further opposition from the Turkic nobles. Nizamul Mulk Muhammad Junaidi, a Tazak officer who had held the post of the wazir since Iltutmish's time, refused to accept her ascension. He was joined by four Turkic nobles, who had also rebelled against Razia's predecessor Runuddin. These nobles included Malik Izuddin Muhammad Salari of Badon, Malik Izuddin Kabir Khan Ayaz of Multan, Malik Saifuddin Kuchi of Hansi, and Malik Alauddin Jani of Lahore. When these nobles marched against Razia from different directions, she sought help from Malik Nusratuddin Taisi, whom she had appointed as the governor of Awad. However, shortly after crossing the Ganges on his way to Delhi, Taisi was captured by Kuchi's forces, and died in captivity. Razia then led an army out of the fortified city of Delhi to fight the rebels, and set up a camp on the banks of the Yamuna River. After some indecisive skirmishes, the rebel leaders Muhammad Salari and Izzuddin Kabir Khan Ayaz decided to join Razia. They secretly met with Razia, and the group planned to arrest other rebel leaders, including Junaidi. However, Junaidi and other rebel leaders learned about the plan, and escaped, pursued by Razia's forces. Saifuddin Kuchi and his brother Fakhruddin were captured, imprisoned, and later executed. Junaidi fled to the Sirmore Hills, and died there. Alauddin Jani was killed at the Nakawan village, and his head was later brought to Delhi. Immediately after ascending the throne, Razia made several important appointments. She appointed Khwaja Mahazabuddin as her new wazir, and conferred the title Nizamul Mulk upon him. Mahazabuddin had earlier served as deputy to the previous wazir Junaidi. Razia appointed Malik Saifuddin Ibek Batu as the in charge of her army, and conferred the title Kulf Khan upon him. However, Saifuddin died soon after, and Razia appointed Malik Kutbuddin Hassan Ghari to the newly created office of Nay by Lashkar. Razia assigned the Ikta of Lahore, formerly held by the slain rebel Alauddin Jani, to Malik Izzuddin Kabir Khan Ayaz, the rebel who had joined her. Razia appointed her loyalists to imperial household positions, including Malik I Kabir Ikshayarud Nadegin as Amir I Hajib and Malik Jamaluddin Yakut as Amir I Akar. Minaj mentions that soon, all the nobles from Laknati in the east to Dabal in the west acknowledged her authority. Razia's first military campaign directed at non-rebels was an invasion of Ranthambor, whose Shahamana ruler had asserted his sovereignty after Iltutmish's death. Razia directed Malik Kutbuddin Hassan Ghari to march to Ranthambor, he was able to evacuate the Turkic nobles and officers from the fort, but was unable to subjugate the Shahamanas. The Shahamanas, in alliance with the Mu'atis, captured a large part of present-day northeastern Rajasthan, and carried out guerrilla war around Delhi. Razia also sent a force to reassert Delhi's control over Gwalior, but this campaign had to be aborted. During Razia's reign, the Shias revolted against the Sultanate, but the rebellion was suppressed. In a major incident, the Shia Karmatians carried out an attack on the Jama Masjid in Delhi. The Karmatian leader Naruddin Turk had earlier condemned the Sunni Shafi and Hanafi doctrines, and had gathered nearly 1,000 supporters from Delhi, Gujarat, Sindh, and the Doab. On March 5, 1237, he and his supporters entered the mosque, and started killing the Sunnis assembled there for the Friday prayers, before being attacked by the citizens. In 1238, Malik Hassan Karlu, the former Khorasmian governor of Ghazni, faced a threat from the Mongols, and sent his son to Delhi, probably to seek a military alliance against the Mongols. Razia received the prince courteously, assigned him the revenues of Buran for his expenses, but refused to form an alliance against the Mongols. The nobles who supported Razia intended her to be a figurehead, but she increasingly asserted herself. For example, her initial coins were issued with her father's name, but by 1237 to 1238, she had started issuing coins solely in her own name. Isami mentions that initially, she observed Purta, a screen separated her throne from the courtiers and the general public, and she was surrounded by female guards. However, later, she started appearing in public dressed in traditional male attire, wearing a cloak and a hat. She rode on elephants through the streets of Delhi, making public appearances like the earlier sultans. Razia's increasing assertiveness and her appointment of non-Turkic people to important posts created resentment among the Turkic nobles. The post of Amir I Akar had previously been held by officers of Turkic origin, and Yakut was of Abyssinian origin, 
therefore, Razia's Turkic officers resented this appointment. Chroniclers such as Asami, Sirhindi, Badani, Firestah, and Nizamuddin Ahmad attribute Razia's intimacy with Yakut as a major cause of her downfall. In 1238-1239, Malik Izuddin Kabir Khan Ayaz, the governor of Lahore, rebelled against Razia, and she marched against him, forcing him to flee to Sodra. Because the area beyond Sodra was controlled by the Mongols, and because Razia continued to pursue him, Izuddin was forced to surrender and accept Razia's authority once again. Razia treated him leniently, she took away the Ikta of Lahore from him, but assigned him the Ikta of Multan, which Iltutmish had assigned to Ikshayarudin Karakash Khan Adigin. Razia had recalled Ikshayarudin Adigin, a Turkic slave purchased by Iltutmish, to her court in Delhi, and made him Amir I Hajib. She had also bestowed favors upon another slave of Iltutmish, Ikshayarudin Altunya, by assigning him first the Ikta of Buran, and then the Ikta of Taberhinda. However, these two officers conspired with other Turkic officers to overthrow her, while she was away on the Lahore campaign. Razia arrived in Delhi on April 3, 1240, and learned that Altunya had rebelled against her in Taberhinda. Unaware that other nobles in Delhi had joined Altunya in conspiring against her, Razia marched towards Taberhinda ten days later. At Taberhinda, the rebel forces killed her loyalist Yakut and imprisoned her. According to Minaj, Razia ruled for three years, six months, and six days. When the news of Razia's arrest reached Delhi, the rebel nobles there appointed Moijdin Baram, a son of Iltutmish, on the throne. He formally ascended the throne on April 21, 1240, and the nobles pledged allegiance to him on May 5, 1240. The nobles expected the new king to be a figurehead, and intended to control the affairs of the state through the newly created office of Nabi Mamlakat, which was assigned to Ikshayarudin Eight again. However, the new king had Ikshayarudin Eight again assassinated within one to two months. After deposing Razia, the nobles at Delhi had distributed important offices and iktas among themselves, ignoring claims of Ikshayarudin Altunya, who had arrested Razia at Taberhinda. After Adigin's death, Altunya lost all hope of realizing any benefits from Razia's overthrow, and decided to ally with her. Razia also saw this as an opportunity to win back the throne, and married Altunya in September 1240. The two were supported by some other disgruntled Turkic nobles, including Malik Karakash and Malik Salari. Altunya assembled an army, which according to Asami, included Kokers, Jats, and Rajputs. In September to October 1240, Sultan Moishin Baran led an army against the forces of Altunya and Razia, and defeated them on October 14, 1240. Altunya and Razia were forced to retreat to Kaital, where they were deserted by their soldiers, and were killed by a group of robbers. Razia was killed on October 15, 1240. She remains the only Muslim woman to have ever sat upon the throne of Delhi. Graves of Razia and her sister The Grave of Razia is located at Mahala Bulbilai Khana near Turkmen Gate in Old Delhi. The 14th century traveler Ibn Battuta mentions that Razia's tomb had become a pilgrimage center, a dome had been built over it, and people sought blessings from it. Razia's grave is said to have been built by her successor and half brother Baram. Another grave, said to be of her sister Shazia, is located beside her grave. Razia was a devotee of the Sufi Saint Shah Turkmen Bayabani, and the place where she is buried is said to be his hospice. Today, the site is largely neglected the Archaeological Survey of India performs annual maintenance to it, but has been unable to beautify it further because it is surrounded by illegal construction. And is approachable only through a narrow, congested lane. In the late 20th century, the local residents constructed a mosque near it. A ruined building in Katal is purported to be the site of Razia's original grave. Coins of Razia are found in silver and villain, one gold coin of Bengal style is also known. Silver tankas were issued from both Bengal and Delhi. Initially she issued coins from Delhi in the name of her father Il Tumish citing the title Nasrat I. E. Female title of Nasir. Several Indian films have portrayed the Empress. Razia Begum was an Indian silent film by Nanubhai B. Desai and Bhagwati Prasad Mishra. Devendra Goel directed Razia Sultana, a 1961 Indian Hindi language film which starred Narupa Roy in the titular role. A notable portrayal was by Hema Malini in the 1983 biopic Razia Sultan by Kamal Amrohi. In 2015, and TV started airing Razia Sultan, a TV series on the life of Razia, starring Pankaria Wasti as Razia and Rohit Parohit as Altunya. Thanks for watching.